catch at UK here again. Um, just an update video on some of the uh, projects I've got going on here with these uh, MV uh, 1FZ boards. Um, this is the spares board that I got from ZNZ. Um, cleaned up a little bit, um, put a bit of solder, oh, you can see it on the uh, three tracks. That, they're okay though, they were just lightly scratched, but I've turned them with a bit of solder there anyway. Um, tested continuity. The other thing I've um, done is cl I've cleaned this up. It doesn't look it, it's, it's got a strange texture to it, but it is, trust me, it's cleaned up that. Um, check the pins on these um, to make sure they're connected to the relevant places. And there was a there was a join there, I think it was pin seven. Uh, sorry, not seven, seven from the top left on both chips joined. And I compared that to my other boards, and that's not supposed to be joined. So mm, I'm going to try this um, shortly. Um, see what difference that makes. Um, still need a bit more cleaning up around this um, 74HC32. Don't know whether that needs replacing yet. I'm going to test that with a Logic Pro once I get this uh, up and running again in a minute um, with the uh, diagnostics uh, ROM in there. I need to put that in. Um, so moving on to the other board. <coughs> what I've just done with this one. This is the spares board. Sorry, that was. No, that was the spares board. As you can see, I've put the um, Neo C1 chip back on there now. So uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, this is the one that had the faulty start on the player 2 inputs, so we'll see what's happened with that. I'd be really curious to see if that's disappeared. I doubt it has, but it's just transferred to this board now. So, going back to this board, this is the um, spare, another spare board I got. This one was described as working, so there was not really, and I've tested this briefly. I don't think there's anything needs to be done with this. I've removed the battery, uh, as you can see, so it's pretty hard to get off. I don't know why, on this particular board, it was pretty hard to get off. Um, I ended up using the soldering iron and the desoldering station. Um, together in order to generate enough heat to remove that. Um, yeah, I've just cleaned this up a bit because there was some corrosion sort of just on the, you can't see it now, but there was a bit of corrosion just down here on one of these pins and same over here. Um, the ROM chip, there was, a, there was some awful corrosion, corrosion on top there, just a bit, it, it's, there was something dripped onto the actual, you know, um, plastic or ceramic package or whatever it is. Um, but it was on a couple of the pins as well. So as you can see, I've, what I've done with those is just got the wire brush on. That didn't get, get rid of it all, so I just got some really, really fine grit sandpaper and uh, just sanded the top top of the pin, side of the pin, and the underneath of the pin, and it's, looked to, it's back to looking like brand new. Cleaned it with a bit of isoprop as well at the end just to get rid of any final bits of residue, but so uh, that's looking pretty sweet, so... Um, yeah, that'll go back in there. I'm not going to put that in there because I'm going to put the unit bias, uh, the, sorry, the diag from in there now with the diag cart. We're going to give this a test. So, final step now um, is just to clean up this because you can see there's some more corrosion here, just the same that was on the top of that ROM chip. A bit there, a bit there. Ooh, nasty looking. But so I do know that this bridge works fine. There's no damage traces. It's just purely cosmetic uh, stuff that needs cleaning off there. A, bit, a, bit, a few bits of corrosion. Um, yeah, and I'll give both of these a try. Um, there you go, you can see it's cleaned up now. Uh, just used a wire brush um, just to get the initial uh, surface corrosion off there um, on both sides of this. Then used a piece of uh, that, again, fine grit sandpaper and just gone over the um, contacts there. Then used some isoprop and brushed as best as I can, sort of brushed the isoprop all in and out around pins and stuff there. Still looking a bit dull just at that point there, but it's, yeah, it's pretty clean. Um, some isoprop in these here, and again, just use some you know kitchen roll, or, you know paper towel, and inside that just to you know whiz up and down, just get any uh, stuff that's inside there um, off, and that's, that's okay. So a final thing now, just before I reassemble this, I'm just going to get a, a piece of sandpaper, fold it in two, and just give uh, you know this, this car edge here a good clean. But looking pretty straight there. Um, all three of these um, the, the car, the MV one off set boards I've got, the bridges are all good. Just show you the other one. Yeah, this is the other one. So, yeah, the board needs cleaning up a bit, it's a bit dirty, but the contacts are all good on this one. Ooh, some corrosion there, actually. I don't know if you can see that. I hadn't noticed that. Uh, that stands out really. See, once you've cleaned one, then something like that becomes, I don't know, you can tell the difference there, it becomes really visible that there's some dark green stuff there. That side's alright, but that side ain't. So, I'll clean that up. Same thing, sandpaper in the slot. Uh, should be good to uh, test. And, Right, so um, this um, board with the, um, I've replaced the C1, put the faulty C1 back on, just done some tests on that, yeah, and it's still the same backup RAM. Um, slightly different backup RAM message since I removed that wire, so um, I think it's saying the upper, the upper chip's got a problem. 
which I think is round four. Could be staying. I honestly don't know. I'm going to try round four. I'm just going to swap that over with a known working chip and see what happens. Yeah, so the other thing I've done with this is this cart was still playing up a little bit. It's, it's been intermittent um, since that last video where I thought I'd resolve this when there was a bit of fluff or something between two of the pins and there was a slightly suspect scratch uh, across the board there. But I've had a good look at that, that scratch, definitely not the scratch. Um, and it has been still intermittent a little bit. So one of the things I did do to this is um, I took the two diodes out of this um, out, out one of the boards. I think it was the the board containing the VROMs, and replaced that with a 3.3 volts uh, one amp regulator. Um, and I had no problems since I did that work. Um, so yesterday lunchtime I did the same thing for the second uh, the, the character board, the, you know, with the sound ROM and you know the, the sprite ROM and stuff on there. Um, so, um, well I say I did the same thing, I didn't I actually routed it through all through the one regulator, there's just a single wire joining the two boards up, so, um, you know, it seems to have been fine, it's, it's been fine, it's been totally, totally, totally rock solid since, so, um, I don't know, read into that what you will, I mean, it, I may well find in a few weeks it starts playing up again, but most of the things I've done to this, it's always started playing up within a day or two. But since I've uh, put the 3.3 volt regulator on the uh, cart there, I've had no problems at all. It's just not, you know, it's been solid for probably three or four days now, I would say. Um, and I've had the cart in and out, in and out, in and out. It's been, in, I've had the cart the separate boards in and out there as well. So there's been plenty of um, chance there for loose connections and things to, you know, um, wiggle around and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm not had an issue with that. So uh, only time will tell. But uh, yeah, I'm pleased with that. That, that, that little display there, it's just the right height, it's just the right size, um, and it's dual purpose, it's showing me the power, you know, the, the voltage level there for the 5 volt, but it's also showing me that the thing's powered up, because, um, you know, the, the little LED under the car, that was great, and I didn't think about that uh, when I did it, you know, I thought, oh, that'll be look, cool looking blue little LED there, you know, underneath the car, but you can't see it, you know, if you've got a clear car in, obviously it lights the clear car up, so that's great. But there's no other, you know, indication of the power being on apart from the LED. And I don't know if you can see this, the little red LED, it's not very visible, is not doing anything at the moment. It's, that is being intermittent on its own. So I think the LED's on its way out. Um, <laughs> I'm amazed, really. Uh, I've never had an LED fail on me before, but yeah, that's um, LED. <laughs> Needs replacing up a blue one in the side there, but um, it's not very visible anyway, the, you know, the location it's in. But at least now I've got a, a nice clear indication of uh, you know the health I guess of the power supply. Um, as soon as that starts shooting up, I can switch it off. So just something else here related to the um, that other border shed where I put the Neo C1 chip back on there, the one that's got faulty uh, P2 start. Um, it's dawned on me last week. It was, it's really some of the simplest of ideas really to solve that problem, um, rather than using a you know. A, a little bit of a very strict board with uh, some load of TTL chips and stuff on quite complicated wiring and stuff. I start, It just suddenly dawned on me, I thought, why don't I just use a PIC chip? You know, a single one of these little PIC microcontrollers. Um, this one this one here, the, the ones I've ordered, are, these are PIC 16F505s, which I believe have got something like 12 I.O. pins on there, so it uh, should be enough. You've got seven address lines, that leaves um, five. I.O. pins, one of them's got to use by the clock, so I'll leave four, and then I need to just um, obviously route the actual pin itself to D10, that'll leave three pins, and so I've got three pins there to use for the assertion, and I'm guessing I'm probably going to use the AS pin and the read-write pin, and that's probably all, gonna, all I'm going to need. Um, I might need to get the logic um, analyzer on there to um, determine the right uh, timing and stuff but the, the beauty of this is this particular chip the reason I ordered these I've already got a lot of pick chips but the reason I ordered these these will go up to 20 megahertz um, so it will ex ex accept an external clock now I'm not sure whether how easy it's going to be to do that because um, the way the clocks usually work on these are those little two pin crystals that aren't a full oscillator package and you know I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to just insert the uh, or inject the existing 16 megahertz clock from the Neo board or whatever it is that goes into the C1. It might not even be 16 megahertz that you know, clocks at 16 megahertz, I don't know. But um, yeah, so I need to, might need to do some work around the clock there to synchronize the clock with uh, the 16 megahertz or whatever it is that the C1 is using. Um, but yeah, so um, I need to get on with that at some point. So as I mentioned earlier, 
I did the uh, mod to this, removed the diodes. There were originally two, um, I think there's IN4007s. 0, 0, 007, yeah, I don't know, it's a three zeros there. Um, yeah, two diodes in there, sort of going up that direction uh, from my mouse cathode. Um, and the way this, it's really, really simple. If you're not aware how diodes and things work, you know, you get your 5 volt in, it comes into the first diode. Um, the diode will induce a voltage drop of a point, approximately 0.7 volts. Um, and then I think the output underneath goes through the, you know, it goes through the board, through the wire, and it comes back to the bottom here, up through the uh, anode cathode of the next diode. So you get another 0.7 volt, volts drop. Um, and then that, 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 that's, I think it's that top right pin there is used to supply the 3.3 volts that's used by these chips and these CPLD slash FPGAs and the CPU as well. It's all 3.3 volt uh, logic on there. Um, so, see if we can do this without uh, damaging the work I've done there. Uh, so you can see that. So all I've done is underneath the point where the 5 volts um, goes out to you know supply the 3.3 that center pin there the actual uh, uh, thing you know the, the, the pin you normally sort of you know go, you, that's the one that dissipates the heat usually I've soldered it onto that so you see, that's it provides the output by the way it's the output 3.3 volts so that goes straight to the 3.3 volt output supply and then you only got two of the pins coming in one of them is the five volts um, in which um, I've managed to solder straight to the point where the uh, originating five volts comes in um, and then you ground um, and obviously I've just soldered the ground to the nearest ground point which is over there um, and then as I say I've had to just use one wire I could put some sort of connector or something in there to separate that but, but because I've, I did the same thing I don't know if I can show you on the other board which should be, ah there you go you can see there were two diodes on here again same thing um, I think the 5 volt still comes in at the same place it just goes under the, through the wire and comes up to this point here into one diode and then from that diode into the other diode, so it was exactly the same arrangement, just laid out slightly differently. There, I have two um, IN or one end, I think the one end, one end 4007s. Um, <clears throat> since I did that, it became a lot more stable. It's not, the problem's not gone away completely, um, I have to admit. It's uh, just occasionally when it's freezing, when the console's, when the cart's all cold, it's been left overnight, you can plug it in. And I would say there's a 10% chance it can be, it can play up, but uh, you just sort of leave it on for a minute or two. And um, I don't know whether it is to do with the voltage on this because the voltage on this is fluctuating a little bit, um, but it stabilizes. As soon as this starts to stabilize and it gets to about 5.15 or 5.10 volts, um, the glitching goes away and everything's fine. You can play it for hours on end. So, this, you know, there's a temperature thing going on there. I did wonder, one thing, that, that thing I've not done, which I will probably do, is resolder all of the pins on these C chips, which is only going to take ooh, 15 minutes. Just get some flux on there. Just put some flux on, drag the, the iron across, and that's all I've done with these, is you just put some flux around, on, on, all around the, the edges there, um, and that flux paste slash grease stuff, you know, it's like a, you know, it's, it's a bit gooey, it's not like runny water sort of stuff, it's a bit more solid. Um, you put some of that on, all the way around, and then just go over the iron, just drag the iron across, check it with a magnifying glass, and, you know, multimeter if you need to, but you find it, it really, you know, it does a perfect job, and that was how I did the Neo C1 chip and stuff on there, and how I've, I will tidy up the um, SRAM and stuff later, and the Z80. Um, I just didn't have any uh, liquid flux at the time, so that was one of the reasons why I left that. I was going to leave that to one of the last stages before I tidied up all of those, the, the work I'd done on those other service mode chips. Um, but yeah, so I need to do the same, same on these uh, CH chips, um, just for my own peace of mind, because I've done everything else. I've done the, the, the chips on there, I've done the sound and done the M1. Um, it's uh, just the CH chip, so you know there could still be a loose, a dry joint or something. It's funny, you know, in retrospect, looking what, when I when I did this cart yesterday, I uploaded the video for this earlier, uh, the uh, King of Monsters, and I got the scope on there, and I did that bit of analysis there to determine, you know, to look at the the transit, the TTL transition levels there between logic low and logic high on the data bus. In theory, it's going to be a similar thing with this. This is probably what's going on with this cart when you get this weird behaviour and you get in this capacitive reactant type. Um, effects where you know just your interaction nearby making it play up a certain way. Um, I read a comment on the EV blog forum. Um, someone suggested um, you know it's probably going to be um, a failed pull-up resistor or something, um, and that just made me think that um, you know when I was looking at that at King of Monsters car, that actually that could be what's wrong with this. Is that one of these chips is you know a bit temperature related? When it's cold, the pull-up resistor's not working right or something like that 
apologies for the randomness of this video, you know, I've done all sorts of bits and pieces on various projects. I'm just putting together the uh, clean now uh, King of Fights 2 cart, as you can see. Uh, one of the final things to do with this has been washed with soap and water, used a, a brush to get in between the grills here. Uh, still a bit of stuff that needs cleaning out. But uh, one of the final things I do on this, as I've showed you on the Mega Drive, uh, use some of this uh, Meguiar's Plastex. This is a uh, plastic uh, polish. And uh, as you can see, even though this has been soaked in hot soapy water, scrub, 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 it, and it dried off, no, nothing, you know, it came out really clean with uh, paper towels and stuff afterwards. When you use this plastic stuff, I don't know, you can see it does bring the uh, any grain dirt out of any of the scratches and things. So, um, you know, so areas like that, for example, um, that will just come up like mint uh, by the time I finish with this, and any of these marks and things, and it ends up being like uh, good, good as new. Um, that sounds almost done, it just needs a bit of a wipe down, a few smears and things on there, but by the time I finish that, that'll look great, and uh, get a new King of Monsters 2 label on there, and I'm all done. Uh, there you go, you can see the results, look at the mucks come off that, which are with a plastic cleaner, um, and that's even though it's been soaked in the sink and stuff, and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed, but you can see the end result there is, uh, there's only bits of fluff on it, it comes up, you know, it's pretty shiny, uh, there's a few scratches there that are really hard grained in, but can't get off, but um, yeah, overall the new label and stuff there, that's looking pretty sweet. So uh, I'll add that to collection.